throughout the course of our history, individuals have pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor for the cause of freedom and liberty. Our district must not let history indict us for allowing Keith Ellison's record of failure to go unchallenged. I believe today it is our responsibility to endorse the candidate who is best qualified to ensure that the blood, sweat, and tears that secured our liberty, freedom, and protected this country were not shed in vain. My name is Chris Fields. I am a proud 21-year combat veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Oh. And it is true, my life started out being born to a 15-year-old mom who had three kids before she was 20 in a tough inner city. We held on to our deepest held convictions and we found success. I stand here before you to seek your endorsement, an endorsement that I will abide by because I simply believe this, anyone who wants to represent you must take the first step and that is to listen to you. I want to talk to you about a couple of things. I want to tell you that I'm prepared to take the challenge of taking on Keith Ellison's record and standing up to a political culture that has gotten so poisoned and so extreme. First, let me start with Keith's record. When it comes to government, Keith believes that checks and balances in government means Democrats fighting Republicans. For me, <laughs> checks and balances in government mean this, that we have a Congress, and only a Congress, that has the power and authority to declare war, and that we do not have an executive branch. <laughs> and that we do not have an executive branch that takes the extraordinary step of committing our troops and resources to a war in Libya without congressional approval. And that we have a Supreme Court that stands up for the Constitution, like it will this summer when it repeals Obamacare. <laughs> I believe it's time for our three branches of government to start working like they're supposed to. I will vigorously defend the Constitution of the United States, the Bill of Rights, and the rights of the unborn. When it comes to our economy, Keith has said that rules and regulations crafted in Washington, D.C. are a sound and viable strategy for creating jobs. And he says this with such certainty, as if this is a new economic theory that should be taught on college campuses everywhere. What will we call it? Keithonomics? <laughs> it makes no sense. Keithonomics will completely eviscerate small businesses. It will ensure that only giant multinational corporations can compete. It will be the end of our corner bars and our Juicy Lucy burgers. It'll be the end of Broadway pizza. <laughs> and we don't want that, do we? <laughs> Let me tell you, Keithonomics and his so-called Ellison Doctrine will only do one thing for us. It'll help us win the race to the bottom. And folks, we can't stand for that. I vigorously support our free enterprise system because I know that it is the best way to create small business jobs and create our, get our economy going. I support and defend the complete annihilation of a 72,000 page tax code that has done nothing more than keep every Washington lawyer lobbyist fully employed. And I do support a complete and full audit of the Federal Reserve, an organization, <laughs> the 
are an organization that has acted in secrecy with no accountability for far too long. And if I'm there, we will end that practice. When it comes to education, Keith's record is of utter failure because he fights against meaningful education reforms even while the achievement gap between rich and poor, black and white, is the largest in the entire country right here in our Twin Cities. I know that the best way to educate our children is to bring our dollars and decisions back from Washington, D.C. and into the hands of state and local people. And one last thing about uh, Keith's record. You know, when it comes to your rights, he is completely okay with putting a mountain of laws and regulations between you and your Second Amendment rights. But then he turns around and demonizes sincere attempts at reforming our electoral process. And in the process, he insults every veteran, minority, and senior by implying that we are not smart enough or resourceful enough to get a free photo ID. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 63% of Minnesotans agree with us. Photo ID is a good idea, and if I'm there, we can make it happen for everywhere. But I'll tell you this. It's not going to be enough to just take on Keith because Keith is part of a larger political culture that must be challenged. It is a political culture that has gotten so extreme that it leaves people behind and serves no one. In 1963, Martin Luther King said this in his I Have a Dream speech. He deplored the fact that black Americans were languishing in the corners of American society. His efforts were instrumental in shattering the manacles of segregation and chains of discrimination that we faced at that time. Well, today, there is another more insidious form of bias that we face. It is this extreme political culture that forces itself on the people of every race, color, and creed who dare to stand up like you and challenge the status quo. It is, <laughs> it is an extremism that has destroyed self-initiative and created a culture of dependency. It is an extremism that injects fear, fear of change, fear of progress, fear of fiscal responsibility, and a shallow ploy to scare Americans, especially our senior citizens. It is a political culture that tramples on our Constitution, extinguishes our individual liberties, while at the same time it glorifies one-size-fits-all government and worships at the altar of political correctness. This political culture is in fact the new modern-day Jim Crow because it serves as a barrier between we the people, our freedom, and our liberty. It has caused tens of thousands in this district, millions in our country, to languish in the corners of American society today. And today I say that we languish no longer. I say today that we come together and we shatter these manacles of division and break the chains of hypocrisy. Ladies and gentlemen, I say that we can do better, we must do better, indeed, we deserve better. I'm asking for your vote because I can get us there. I will provide the leadership that puts an end to Keith Ellison's assault on our civil liberties, our rights, and our economic freedom. Thank you.